An airship flies like a, a shark or a whale swims un underwater. So it's a quiet giant. It's like riding the waves. If in the morning, if the wind is calm, if you have no thermal activity, like an ocean in the morning when it's really calm, smooth like hell, like you're riding on, on silk. Airships were once at the forefront of aviation until the famous Hindenburg disaster of 1937 brought the industry crashing to the ground. Since then, they've been mainly used as expensive billboards in the sky. But many startups are now entering the scene, touting their low carbon credentials. Their presence poses the question, are airships making a comeback? There are only around 10 airships in the world that are fly-worthy. That's according to Zeppelin, the main manufacturer and only company that operates commercial passenger flights. It's also behind the Goodyear Blimp, the world's most famous advertising airship. Millions have gazed skywards at Goodyear's logo, drifting above cities and major sporting events, from the Mega Bowl in the United States to tours around Europe. There is certainly something mesmerizing about these hulking, gentle giants. You can't help but look up. Valuable currency for a brand. Even, it seems, in an age of online advertising, clicks and impressions. Monocle travelled to Friedrichshafen in Germany to meet Zeppelin CEO Eckhard Breuer and find out what the future may hold for this niche area of aviation. We have a long endurance, so we can easily stay airborne for 10 hours, which means it's a perfect means of presenting a brand in the sky, of presenting, uh, of offering a wonderful flying experience for the passengers. We have huge windows, so really you move at slow speeds, at low altitude, and it's the best viewing platform in the sky. Part of their rarity is down to cost. If you wanted to buy a ship from me tomorrow, then I would quote a price for the airship alone uh, of around 15 million euros. Then there's the maintenance and infrastructure too. A lot is needed to keep everything in ship shape, especially during touring season, including a 17-strong crew. First of all, you need a mast truck, because you need the mast truck in order to moor the airship on the ground when you want to shut down the engines. Then you need... Um, um, a helium cleaner, which is very important in order to keep the lifting gas in a, in a pure uh, and, uh, and, uh, and clean condition. You need a certain uh, amount of, uh, of tools and, and spare parts, so um, uh, it's, it, it's quite an operation and it's, 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 it's quite a number of equipment that you need to operate an airship. Soon it was our turn to embark and take to the skies, climbing at a steep 35 degree angle until we reached a cruising altitude of 1,000 feet. The 14-passenger gondola provided a snug setting, with huge windows that open out and give a new perspective on the world down below. Matchbox houses and orderly German fields gave way to a more ethereal landscape as we drifted across a shimmering Lake Bodensee. Only a handful of people in Europe are qualified to fly an airship. Manning the open cockpit was our captain for the afternoon, Fritz Günther. You still have to do everything by hand and a lot by feel. So it's really an art. It's not like when you fly an ILS with a business jet, where everything is done based by numbers. Here we still have to feel the ship, we have to feel the weather. It doesn't matter if we have a flight by light and uh, a steering system, glass cockpit or so on. You still have to feel it. And it's really an art to do an airship landing a proper way. It's an art. The job itself is really amazing because, you know, we're flying passenger operations. We went to Africa looking for diamonds. We were counting orcas in Seattle. We did scientific work in Finland. And now we are here at the lake and doing passengers in this lovely environment. So it's really great. While Gunther has enjoyed a varied career, there aren't a lot of practical uses for airships, beyond advertising, tourism and aerial broadcasting. A myriad of startup ventures have materialised in recent years, promising everything from air freight services to eco-friendly transport to trips to the North Pole. But for now, Breuer remains sceptical. 
in order to use airships for cargo transport, you need significantly larger ships, significantly bigger ships than what we see here today in order to carry heavier payloads. It will be very interesting to see these, these various projects that are currently in, in development, if they can um, create a successful business plan and amortize the development costs that go into such large airborne vehicles. While their renaissance is seemingly up in the air, it was eventually time for us to come back down. Gunther guided our graceful descent, whereupon we swapped seats passenger by passenger with the next cohort to maintain the same weight. Ballast was released and the airship ascended for its next otherworldly flight.